This video deals with free body diagrams. Two questions. What is a free body diagram and how do we draw a free body diagram? So for a free body diagram is a simple diagram that illustrates all forces acting on an object. So the first example I'm going to show you is uh, an apple on a table. So um, let's, uh, let's draw the apple. And I made the apple square. It doesn't really matter because the forces that act on an object act on the center of the object. So we're going to draw a dot right here in the middle. And we know that there is uh, gravity acting on the apple. So gravity pulls the apple, the apple downwards. We'll use Fg to symbolize gravity. Now, if the apple's on the table and gravity is pulling down, uh, we notice that the apple doesn't move down, so there must be an opposing force acting on, um, uh, on the apple. Um, so that opposing force would be the table uh, pushing upward, and we call that force n, uh, which means normal force. So this right here is called the normal force. Now, I don't want you to think that normal is in reference to abnormal. Uh, what is a normal force? Let's define that right here. So uh, normal force Um, it's the force, the force a surface um, provides um, uh, uh, upon touching it. So the, the, the force a surface provides uh, when you push on it. So that's what we mean by normal force. We're going to explore uh, normal force in more detail in some future uh, video. But for now, if we put an apple on the table, gravity pulls it down um, into the table, the table pushes back up with a normal force. So what if we have the apple, say, falling? So apple falling, uh, falling in air. Let's say that there is uh, no air resistance, AR, air resistance. So that's our example, apple falling. So we have our apple right there. And now we're going to um, illustrate all the forces acting on the apple. We know that gravity pulls it down. That's why it's falling. And there is no air resistance. There's nothing else touching the apple, so there are no contact forces. Um, so that, uh, and there's no air resistance. That would be a contact force. So that's the only force acting on the falling apple. And uh, according to Newton's second law, if a force acts upon an object, that object will accelerate. So we know that when we drop an apple, um, in air, and we ignore the air resistance, the apple will speed up as it moves downward. So what if we have a uh, apple falling with air resistance? So apple falling, and we have with air resistance. Okay, let's draw our apple right there. And uh, we know that the, uh, gravity is present. Can't escape gravity. So that'll be Fg going down. And uh, as the apple falls down, the air pushes back. So if you, you uh, move through air, 
air pushes back. So that's kind of like a normal force in a sense, but we, we don't consider the air the surface, but we know that the uh, as the object falls, it encounters the air. So let's call this F-A-R. You can just call it F-A, that would work. So that's an example. Uh, three examples of an apple, apple on a table, apple falling, no air, apple falling, uh, with air resistance present. So let's look at a couple of other things. Um, how about an apple suspended from a string? So uh, apple suspended by string. So what would that look like? Well, let's draw, draw our apple. Uh, we know that we have a force of gravity pulling it down, Fg. And uh, we have a string uh, that's preventing it from falling, so the string must apply an upward force. And uh, let's call that F, um, Fs, S for string in this case, uh, pulling upwards. Um, we, we can also call this tension. That would be a common term. So some people may use T for tension. That would be appropriate. Good. So that's a suspended apple. Um, so let's look at something else. Um, let's box this. These are all kind of separate diagrams. No, I didn't want to do that. Okay, gone. That's what I wanted to do. So we break that up. Easy for you to keep track of everything. Um, so the, the next example, let's talk about, um, say, a box. Um, well, a box sitting on a table would be just like an apple sitting on the table, really no difference. Um, so how about a, a box uh, being pulled or pushed across a table? So pushing or pulling uh, a box on table. Oh, actually, I wanted to make that black, but that's okay. Blue will work. Um, so let's make our box. Let's give it a different color. Right there. That's our box. Looks just like an apple. Um, remember, the shape doesn't matter. It, the forces acting on the box that matter. So if uh, we, we um, add the forces, we know that we have gravity that pulls the box down. We'll call that Fg. Since it's sitting on a surface, the surface pushes um, up away from the surface with a normal force. We'll call that Fn. Uh, let's say that we're pulling to the right. So if we're pulling to the right or pushing to the right, it doesn't matter if it's a push or pull. The direction of the force is still to the right. So let's call that P, FP for uh, the push or the pull. And uh, if we are dragging it across the surface, that must mean that we have a friction force opposing the motion. And we'll call that F sub F. And that would be friction. So you can have a scenario that has uh, has friction or no friction. Um, again, we're going to explore friction forces in a future video in detail. So that'd be the free body diagram of pulling the box across a surface. Okay. So what else? Um, I guess the, the next thing is, is maybe we should pull this box across a surface uh, with an angled force, uh, kind of like pulling a sled. So let's make that, a, that an example. So pulling a sled. So we pull a sled across a surface, uh, maybe pulling it on um, snow. So there'd be minimum friction. 
uh, or this could be also pulling a wagon. So let's have our object right here. And uh, we have, uh, we know that there's gravity pulling on the object. Can't escape gravity on our planet. Uh, we have a normal force, right? The surface is acting with an upward force. Uh, if that normal force was were not present, then gravity would uh, pull the object downward. And we don't see objects uh, go through the Earth. We could see them sink, say, through uh, mud uh, or sink through water. And that just means that that upward force isn't sufficient to overcome the force of gravity. In this case of the sled on the surface, the upward force happens to be equal to the downward force of gravity, and that's why the object does not move up nor down. Um, now, we said that we had a force that we're pulling on an angle. Uh, let's actually add that. Pull on angle. Okay, that's actually very important. Um, so we're going to pull on an angle like that. So let's call that FP. And let's add some friction. And that would be FF. Now, if you look at that diagram, it's pretty complicated. What we want to do is we want to redraw forces in the X and forces in the Y direction. So redraw to show the free body diagram in the x direction and the free body diagram in the y direction. Okay, so this is my style of doing free body diagrams. Okay, not everybody does this, but I, I think this is a good way of learning about um, how to deal with the forces. So um, let, let me draw the, the x diagram. Uh, in order to do that, what I'm going to have to do is note that there is a x component to FP and there's a y component to FP. And I'm doing that in red here. And of course we have an angle right there. Okay, now the reason I like to redraw the x and y is you can see that that's pretty messy. So let's simplify this by drawing the uh, uh, the x and uh, drawing the x forces. I'm going to start off with the friction force. That's the force that is um, preventing motion or retarding the motion. And uh, it looks like we have only one force to the right, and that would be FPX, the X component of FP, which we would calculate using SOHCAHTOA. And the Y direction, we have, of course, we have our force of gravity. That doesn't change. We have a normal force, FN, going up, and we also have um, the component of the pulling force in the upward direction, that would be FPY. Good. So those would be the, the two um, separate diagrams uh, illustrating what we do with that angled pull force. I think that's enough for now. So see you later.